Aloha, my friends, and welcome to another Aloha Friday drip. Dude, pumped to be here, pumped to chat, pumped to dive in, bro. It's actually Friday, too. We don't usually record on Friday. Nope. You are headed out of town next week, so we're like, oh, geez, we better hurry, snag another episode before Ty dips on out of town. Now, so. now people know that we don't record on Friday. Shit. We're recording on Friday, though. No, we've but already said we, it. I, our I'm, our I'm loyal listeners, <laughs> they know. They know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, dude, I'm pumped about that. I'm going to Miami, and I'm going to go... Uh, uh, to a mastermind with, in fact, as you're listening to this, I'll be in Miami with the mastermind with uh, GC Grant Cardone, yeah. small little intent, you know, in intimate group of people, probably 50, 60 people, something like that. And I am super pumped about that. If you don't know who Grant Cardone is, he also acquires a little bit of real estate. Yeah, as he's, well. he's trying to keep up it. with us, but whatever. <laughs> no, he's no, a stud. I'm very That's- excited to go learn and meet, learn from Grant and. Um, just, just meet people that are there. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I love doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Ty, yeah. Why, before we dive into the episode, why do you like, cause whenever these opportunities yeah. pop up, you jump all over them all over and them. you want to be there and you want to really immerse yourself with these other individuals. Why is that? Dude, because I have, I feel this huge sense of responsibility to grow, like to grow. Right. Because as I grow, I believe that this is my belief. Okay. My belief is that if I stop growing, I lose my ability to lead others. And my, literally my job and my, I believe my calling in life is to lead, inspire, and help other people. And so anytime that I can go and learn, I'm never going there. I'm like, this is going to be a life-changing event. I'm going there to learn this one little bit that can enhance here. This one little bit that can enhance here to have somebody to, you know, meet somebody that th- we're going to talk about thinking bigger today and, you know, meet somebody that thinks bigger than I do. And do Grant Cardone thinks big. He thinks big. Very big. And people that will be in this circle think big. So That's awesome. That's, I, I just want to surround myself with people that are doing bigger things than I'm doing all the time. And you it's know? a great actionable there, too. A great example of what everybody should be doing. No matter what stage you're at. Our last episode, we talked about seasons and how we go through seasons in life. And as we grow... You should always be looking to surround yourself by somebody that's just a little bit in front of you yeah. that you're trying to chase that's going to expand you in, in every which way. It's so. funny, bro, because I got this opportunity. Um, shout out to uh, Steve Harward with PCS, Prime Corporate Services. Man, that guy's a, just an absolute, absolute stud. stud. And I was chatting with him, and I got brought up randomly. And I, I mentioned something along the lines of how much I love going to masterminds. He's like, dude, I actually randomly, I have this opportunity like there's limited seats but like i ha- i happen to have like are you interested and i'm like absolutely i'm like dude let me just check with brit make sure like i'll hurry and text her make sure that you know the dates are good and that I, there's nothing i'm missing text brit and then brit calls me she's like did you really just ask me that go get out of here that's an awesome opportunity get out of here and i'm yeah. like i freaking love you yeah yeah that's, yeah yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yep. That's awesome. You know, I'm excited to hear about that and how it goes. Um, excited to share about what I learned. Yeah. That's what I do. Maybe that's right. what we do on the next episode. Love little, it. Little Grant Cardone weekend review. Love it. Let's I'm do not it. done. Let's do it. Awesome. Topic today. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to go over before we dive into the topic? No, I'm ready. Just a reminder, rate, review, share it. That's the only thing we ask people to do. We're noticing it, by the way. We are noticing Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much, man. I, and we're noticing it on... And listen, we put... I hope you see, I know you see that we put time, effort, thought into these drips. Dallas does. You guys do on your extended cuts. We do on these ones. And so we hope that it's resonating. We hope that you're taking those kind of things. And we, I love that you're sharing. I promise you we see that and we see our numbers growing. And that's because of y'all. And we just appreciate it a ton. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Right along those lines, kind of what Tyler was just talking about, about going down and meeting with Grant Cardone and then coming back and teaching us. That's another great actionable. Another challenge that I'd like to give everybody, take something that you've learned from the growth cast, share the episode, but then follow up with that person and chat about what you've learned, what they could learn and how you can implement it in your life to become better. I like that. that, That's going to be my challenge for everybody this weekend. Great challenge. Do that. And if this is your first time listening to the growth cast, welcome. Monday through Thursday, we have episodes with Dallas Pruitt where he does daily drifts, daily mindset drifts, just keep you motivated and keep you going. Listen. Absolutely amazing. I Abs- freaking love listening to those things. Fantastic episodes. It's, it's, it's been an honor to edit those and be able to listen to those, and it's awesome. I've been forced to listen to them. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. I would listen to them when it's an option. It's, I'm going to continue to listen to them. But Monday through Thursday, we do those. 
Friday, me and Tyler here for Aloha Friday. And then on Saturday is an extended cut with me in Dallas where we talk about another mindset principle. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Please continue to come back and listen. We yes. would love to have you here. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the topic today is going to be what does it mean to think bigger? And then we're going to dive into where you came up with that tagline and then if you can give us some examples of what it is to think bigger to you. Love it. Before we dive in, dude, I remember when you came back. For, I don't know if you plan on talking about this, but you came back from that week with, um, is it, I, I always want to say the name right. Is it Arite? Arite, yeah. Arite, Arite yep. You came back and that was one of the very first things you told me. It was like just being around those individuals, being around Ed and Andy. Oh, yeah really forced you to think bigger it's totally. like things you've never even thought about before yep so it's, it, it would that it, that was awesome i hope we kind of dive into that today i don't know if we plan on to but i definitely want to just just figure out how we can all surround ourselves with people that can think bigger so well that in and of itself is a it's a better question like how can i think bigger how am i thinking smaller right like if we can just recognize that in our lives i mean that opens up so many opportunities like okay in this situation right now how am I thinking smaller and how could I think bigger? How should I think bigger? How does it make sense? Yeah. How would somebody that you're, you know, aspiring to be like, how would they think in this situation? How would they act in this situation? Right. Right. Love it. Great. Wow. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Okay. So let's dive in here then, dude. What does it mean to think bigger? Okay. So let me tell you what I came up with this. And if you don't know, once again, if you're new to the growth cast, new to what everything that we do here. Okay. Um, the growth cast is hosted is, um, Sponsored by sponsored by there uh -huh. we go, by the multifamily mindset. That's our education company. Now we train people how to buy apartment buildings. And so as we created the multifamily mindset, we're that in and of itself, that name has tons of purpose behind it. It's not just some random name. It's, you know, we, yep. there's purpose behind all of that, man. Like multifamily is a mindset. And then the tagline is think bigger and think bigger is it's more than just so if you think about this, I bullet point some of these items, but I mean, there's, I think we, I bullet pointed like six, six items that, uh, it applies to. And there's actually, there's more, you know, but honestly, here's how it came to six. It was time to record. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You know, yeah. but I'll give you an idea of this. Like think bigger before you dive into the six though. It's really yeah. important to pull that out. The thinking bigger, we're going to go over six examples. Yeah. But thinking bigger can be a, applied to more, more than six part of you, six parts of your life. Oh yeah. Say. And so take these examples, but it can also be, I promise you it'll open up your mind to things. And I promise you that it will even help you understand even on a deeper level, how purposeful things are. I'll tell you how, where we came up with this, where the tag, where we came up with the tagline. Cause we thought we listed out tons. I mean, I can show you an Evernote that I just, we all just brainstorm, uh -huh. brainstorm, brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Well, then I was starting to think, and I go back to certain books for uh, inspiration. And one of my favorite all-time books that I've ever read is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. Amazing book. And if you haven't read that book, you should write that down. In fact, don't even write it down. Just go to Amazon and buy that mother. Hit after. pause. Go buy it. Come back. It's a great book. It's literally one. Dave Lindahl referred that book to me. Actually, he didn't refer it to me. He referred it to, I heard him talking to somebody else. And he referred magic of thinking big. And I was like, Oh, I've never, never heard that wrote it down, read it. And I mean, it's one of my all time favorite books. Great book. Okay? And it's essentially how to get the most out of every single aspect of your life. Like you don't have to be unique or this super talented person to cultivate success. You cultivate success, but, but you do have to think in a certain way to cultivate that success. That's what the book talks about. Okay. Like you have to think in a certain way, to cultivate success. And it's something that I'm always trying to challenge myself on, always trying to think bigger. Brittany is amazing at that aspect. We just had a conversation last night on the way. Brittany has a goal to go to the beach every night or every day. And yesterday she hadn't made it to the beach. And so we just took a walk down to the beach for sunset. We do that a lot. We can walk from our back porch. And um, just a little, little subtle flex there. We can walk from our back porch, no big deal. <laughs> it's because I think bigger, pay fucking attention. <laughs> <laughs> a little subtle flex thing. a little subtle flex <laughs> um but we were talking about and i was just picking her mind about these i love talking to her and just picking her mind she is so wise dude and she just thinks she thinks bigger dude and i just i i 
I love picking her mind. And I, I literally told her last night, I was like, dude, I just do not utilize you enough. Me, and what, what I mean by that is like, I don't pick your mind enough. Like she's just, she's wise. Yeah. Anyway. So I can't remember where I was going with that, but the magic of thinking big, that's where this idea came. And then we can get into some of these areas. Okay. Awesome. This damn mic is sag. It's just sagging on me, bro. <sighs> I mean, but it can sag it. Actually, it says nothing in line. Never mind. Just continue. I was going to go through Bob Saget. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Let's keep going. Okay. So give okay. us some examples of thinking bigger and where we can apply them in so our So mindset's number one. Okay. Like obviously, literally think bigger, right? Mindset impacts every single aspect of our life. On my, actually, my other Yeti cup, it says mindset is everything. And it's funny because I, I argue with Dallas because Dallas says mindset isn't everything. It just impacts everything. And I'm always like, Bro, that means it's, it's everything. everything. Yeah. You know, if it impacts everything, it is everything. It's you know? good. It's a good argument. It's a good argument <laughs> to have. <laughs> uh, but man, literally every experience that we have is determined. It, we it's how we interpret it to be, right? So good, bad, negative, positive. It's all how we interpret it to be. These experiences, these things that we go through. Is it good or is it bad? You know, and I think of the first thing that comes to my mind is The Alchemist, the book The Alchemist. And he talks about crossing over into Africa and day one gets all of his money stolen. And he says, I can either view myself as a poor victim of a thief or as an adventurer looking for his treasure. And the, there's only one of those options that is serving. So thinking bigger means to choose the option that is serving towards positivity, growth, success, happiness. He views himself as a, as a adventurer looking for his treasure. You know, last group we talked about the the uh, youth group that we went to putting together tents and how some were complaining and some were joyful as they were learning it. it's like everything is how we perceive it to be you know yeah and if you think about this everything that we do in life everything meaningful for sure that we do in life we're going to face negativity it's, dude it's everywhere we know that I, I we can't be shocked about that we can't be surprised about that it's everywhere so but we can take something positive from any negative, right? Sure. And, and if we, if we're truly dedicated to doing that, taking a positive from every negative, turning every negative into a positive. I remember Dallas created a symbol like that, uh -huh. that and I loved it, but turning every negative into a positive, then every experience we have can become useful. I really like how you called it. You, know, you didn't call it. Oh, geez. I just lost what I was going to say. You didn't call it. Um, uh, you called it an experience. What did you call it? You called it an experience or a, it wasn't positive, negative. You called it something Perspective? else. Perspective? No, you called it serving and not serving. Okay. Yeah. 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 I sorry. really liked how you said that Yeah. because it's like even something that's negative, you can turn into something that's serving. Yes. Meaning that it's turning into something positive. That's right? a better question, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 How can I turn this into something that's serving? How can I view this think bigger in a way that is serving to the overall goal? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like thought that, that was interesting. It, it's almost like a little mindset shift there in itself. It's yeah. like it, not everything has to be positive and negative. Yeah. If you look at it from a serving, not serving standpoint, you don't even like, you don't even get into the negativity of anything. You just look at the situation for what it is yeah. and make it serve you. I love that. That yeah. neutral thinking. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. Dude, I'll give you an example, man. I just, um, no, Noel pull hurt. If you're look, listening to this, I love, I love, she sent me a text. Noelle, seriously. And if you guys in the network who are listening to this, if you don't know Noelle, you should reach out She's to her. Awesome. She just has a great, awesome energy about her, dude. But she sends me this text the other day and she's like, mad Tyler, I just wanted to let you know. And it's like, I can just see the preview, right? And it says, I just wanted to let you know that I submitted my first LOI. And I'm like, oh, sweet. So I click on it, you know? And then underneath it says, and I totally fell on my, uh, on my face. You know, I totally fell on my, uh, on my face, but you know, look like an idiot or whatever she said. And then she said, but I oddly enough or crazy enough, I used that devastation to want to do better and immediately called three brokers. And now I have a better understanding of, you know, her quote, a better understanding of what the fuck is going on, you know, <laughs> but that, but here's, what's crazy about that. So think about this. She falls on her face. What do most people do at that moment? D take a break. Stop. Yep. G or give up. But they go, right. they, they, they go they, recluse mode. Uh, they retract. We've seen that. It's so crazy to me, man. It's when we hit a stumbling block, when we hit struggle, so many people go recluse mode. That's the worst thing in that moment, dude. The best thing is to freaking attack it again. Yep. Go after it. And that's what she yep. did. 
And I absolutely, that is a mindset, dude. That is thinking bigger. That is taking a negative situation and turning it into something positive, something serving, right? And, but the, the, one of my favorite parts about that is she then uh, says that, oh, she, I, I wish I could, I should pull damn text, but she said, um, but what's crazy about that is I actually, then I got a counter back from the broker, which made me realize I didn't follow my face as bad as I thought I did, you know, and now I have this good interaction that they, they actually count. I thought that they wouldn't even counter back on my offer, but they counter back or whatever. Y'all, sometimes we're in our own head, man. And think about that. Think about if we would have just stayed in your own head and not done anything. But now this momentum that she has, this confidence that she has, this, that is a mindset, dude. And when we have, once again, dude, when we have the right mindset, dude, every, we realize that just every failure becomes this learning lesson. And failure is a misunderstood step of success. It's not, it's not only part of the success process, it is vital to the success process. Vital. So you have to train yourself to think bigger and view failure as a good thing, but you have to train yourself to think bigger, literally growth mindset, right? Yeah, dude, it, it ties in a lot with what you talked about last week. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Noel, thank you for sharing that with Tyler so we could share it here. I hope, we hope you're okay with that. I'm sure you are, as it's going to motivate others to do so as well. So, okay, so mindset. Yeah, mindset. number one, mindset. Think bigger, literally mindset-wise. Number two is real estate-wise. I mean, we teach people how to buy apartment buildings. So think bigger real estate deals, think bigger investment deals. When people think, and I, I do this example all the time at my class where we do this case study and it's a smaller case study. And I, I, I ask them, I'm like, how many of you, th and once we get through it, they, their eyes are open to a lot. And I say, how many of you came in here thinking maybe I'll do a duplex, a five unit, a 10 unit, and then grow from there. And dude, a lot of people raise their hands. Think about this. They're, Tagline thinking bigger, multifamily mindset. I'm talking all day about, you know, and in all my, you know, ad campaigns and everything, all everything about doing big apartment deals. But their mindset goes towards smaller. Why why do you think? Scarcity. Yeah. Scarcity. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by that though? Easier? Okay. I think that might be the definitely. thought. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But what easy. Else? Um what they've been told i like being on this side of the coin dude i'm gonna start firing <laughs> questions at you throw bro. them at me dude i would say probably because that's what they've been told that's their perception of it they don't know any better yes okay yeah. it's all of those things dude it's the easier why because they know people that own smaller buildings yeah. maybe they don't know anybody that owns an apartment yeah i also believe that we've been told our whole lives that smaller is safer smaller is safer bigger is riskier dude smaller is literally riskier it's the opposite of what we're trained to think. And, mm -hmm. and that's when, man, when I really started being trained about that and learned about that, it was like, it's crazy to me, dude. That it literally, so any investment is a risk, dude. So the better that we can manage that risk, the safer that investment becomes and the higher your returns will end up being, right? But if we want to increase our chance of winning, this is what's crazy to me too. Listen to this. This is imperative. If we want to, if, if we want to increase our chances of winning, because people think high risk, high returns. That's why they think, well, I know apartments have bigger returns, but it must be higher risk because they're higher returns. No, dude, if we want to increase our chance of winning, we do not have to increase our chance of losing, dude. It's like we go out there and play a basketball game. I, I'm going to focus on increasing my chances of winning. If we need to focus on literally that increasing our chances of winning it, it just seems so simple to me and apartments give her bigger bigger properties apartments give us a bigger chance of winning like that doesn't mean bigger risk it is literally the opposite like the more units we have we literally increase our chances to win if i have a single family property and a tenant moves out well i'm paying that mortgage <laughs> yeah Someone's got to be, someone's got to pay that mortgage that month. Totally. Yeah. I have a five unit building and two people move out. Well, now I'm, now I'm, I'm probably pitching in to help pay that mortgage. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I have a hundred unit building and bro, I have a hundred unit building and I have a mass exodus of 20 people all at once, bro. we're still profitable on that deal, let alone paying the debts over the mortgage. We're still profitable. So we need to increase our chances of winning. And we do that by doing bigger apartment deals that are literally safer and give you opportunity for, for more upside returns. Man, it's so powerful, really. Just by the power of thinking bigger, you increase your chances at winning. 
Mm-hmm. Like that's what you just told me. That's what I just got out. That's one of the I things like that. that I just got I out of that. Love that. Your your ability to think bigger is is increasing your chance to win. Yeah. Okay, dude. What Can else? I take that one more. Yeah. Go one ahead. More level. Yeah, absolutely. Single family property, five unit property. These smaller properties, there's not enough profit to justify multiple partners. On a big apartment deal, there is. So so think about this. How how much time and effort dedication do we put in at MFCP multifamily MF capital partners, multi, our investment company. How many days a week do we work on that business? Seven every day. Yeah. Every day we're thinking about it. Somebody who owns a single family property, a duplex, a templex, they're not thinking about it every day. You want to know why? Cause that's not, it's not their sole source of income. They're working other jobs, dude. And this is a supplemental thing. You will not be able to compete, dude. You're one. And once again, your risk is higher simply because your attention is less. Inve- these passive investors who come in, it's literally, we, every, all day, every day, we have a whole team, teams of people overseeing your investment all the time, every day, thinking through that. All, dude, that's powerful. That's why like, when people invest passively, it's like, I invest passively, by the way, in, I invest in every deal we do, but I also invest passively in other people's deals. You want to know why? Because they can now think about those kind of things. They can think about it. This is another way of thinking bigger. I'll get down to it probably. I'll talk about abundance. But I remember when I first started, I started to invest in other people's deals because I would you know, cash out some single families and I would start investing in other people's deals. And I gained so many great relationships, learned so much. My money's being more. And I remember when I would go to raise money, I would talk to other operators and these other operators would be like, no, I, I only invest in my own deals. That's it. I only invest in my own deals. And I remember thinking, well, if we're being honest, actually, you know what I, I thought sometimes I'm like, man, am I dumb to invest in other people's deals? I literally thought, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's a good, I mean, and I was like, no, dude, I'm learning so much. This is going on. This is going on. And guess where those people are now that owns the ones that only invest in their own deals. That's not abundance, that's scarcity. And guess where those people are nowhere close to where we're at, dude. It's why, because scarcity, they don't think bigger. Dude. Right. That's right. why. Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. So power, like so powerful, especially like I love that synopsis of single family versus multifamily and how thinking bigger is safer, man. It's, it's, it increases your chance of winning. It's awesome. Okay. What else? What else? You said so, you got six of them. So we've covered two mindset, real estate. So number three is thinking bigger by enhancing your belief. It's one of the most important aspects of anything that we do is our personal belief. Like, man, when I go, really, when I go interact with anybody, I, literally not in, anybody, I'm dead serious. One of my, I have this thing and this is a takeaway. Okay. So any of you who are, um, Dude, anything that you do, man, this is, this is my advice to you. Before you go into that situation, really identify who you need to be. Like literally who, like, for example, we did a family meeting the other day and, uh, um, it's start of the new school year. I'm drilling into my kids who we are, the Devereaux, who, what does that mean? What are our core values as a family? And, um, and I, and you know, their confidence and all this kind of stuff. And I literally spent a good chunk of time before I went home walking through like those meeting that meeting outline. I'll show it to you. Like, this whole meeting it. outline guy, yeah. I have slides and everything. I love it, dude. And, uh, but then like, before I went in to do this meeting, it's a serious thing for me. Like, I'm like, okay, I've been in business mode, business mode, business mode. And I, I do this every time before I go home though. I literally will, I never take the fast way home. I always go down Key Hay Road because that whole time it's like, okay, it's dad mode. I don't want to walk in that door until I'm dad mode. So I take the long way so that I can decompress dad mode. So why do I do that? Well, because it's important that you understand who you are and remember who you are in any given situation and who those people around you need to be. But one of the most important aspects of that is your personal belief, dude. My personal belief is I'm a fantastic dad and I'm a fantastic dad because I'm dedicated to being a fantastic dad. That's why it's not any unique skill that I have. It is, I am, I'm dedicated. I want to be a great dad and I'm not always a great dad. Nobody is always anything, but I want to be. So my personal belief and my ability to be a dad is very high. Why? Well, because I try. So personal belief is huge. And I'm going to tell you, any of you out there, listen to me when I say this, any negative thought that you have about yourself, challenge any negative thought that you have about yourself. I promise you, trust me, you are ab- you absolutely have what it takes. 
Your actions are going to match your belief. And your belief needs to be high in your personal ability. I promise you, you have what it takes. These people that you see out there that you look up to, that you um, want to be like, that you think they are just like you, dude. They enhance your personal belief. Just you have what it takes, I promise you. So powerful. So powerful. The one actionable that I want to pull out here um, was your example of how you take the long way home to really get in that mode and set your intentions. Yep. Actionable for everybody out there, whether you, if you work a full-time job, I highly suggest taking that time, set your intentions to be the father, mother, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, whatever it is, yes. that next situation you're going into. Chances are you need to be somebody different than you were when you were at work. Totally. Totally. I definitely challenge everybody. I've, I've put that into place. And it's helped me a ton. It's awesome. Man. Okay, dude. So question for you. How do you enhance your personal belief? I know you kind of just Great went over question. it. I know you kind of just went over one way that you do that. Yeah. But let's dive in a little bit more. N number one, dude, enhance your belief in others. I, I just, man. I believe that, and I got this from Ed Milet, and I, I'm pretty sure it's a quote in his book, and I'm, I said it a couple times, but he says, what surrounds you is within you. And uh, I believe that, in fact, I just had a conversation today. Actually, I told you about this conversation. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one this morning. Yep. This yep. struggle. And that was my advice to him, man, is, is believe, believe in other people, dude. Believe in other people. Like, we believe. In fact, one of our core values, dude, Our core, one of our core values is belief. And I will quote you one of the things from our core value. It is, we believe in others because we believe in ourselves. And others will believe in us because we believe in them. So we believe in others because we believe in ourselves and others will believe in us because we believe in them. Dude, it is, it is a, it's a circle. It's like when you see the best in others, others will see the best in you. But when you don't see the best in others, you are thinking subconsciously, whatever the others are not seeing the best in you. So man, if you just force yourself to see the good in others, I promise you that your personal belief will be enhanced. It will. So that's number one, do believe in others. I believe in people, man. I just do. I don't care what anybody else says about, about people out there. No, I believe that the majority of people are good freaking people. I just do. You, you, if you listen to any high level individual, they talk like Tyler is talking right now about other individuals, about other people, about yeah. people that come on that they, that, that work with them, team members, whatever it may be. They're always speaking about others the way Tyler is. And that's an actionable in itself and something that should be noted should always be talking positive about the people around you. Yeah. Should always have that belief in them. Like, like as Tyler is going over, you enhance your belief by believing in others. I can't, I can't attest to that more. And like, I've watched Tyler do those things, which is incredible. And those are things that don't like these little things, right? You talk about little things being changed that can make huge impacts. This is one of them. Yeah. By far. It's one of them. I agree. So I just wanted to point that out. Can I take that one step deeper? Thank you, by the yeah. way. And I, I, I'll take it even one step deeper. I'm not going to talk about who I was talking to. That doesn't matter. Yeah. But I was talking to somebody who would literally like, dude, they're, they're hurt. Like their heart was hurt, you okay. know? And they're yeah. like, man, I posted about this deal that I just closed. And, um, so excited about it. And any of you who have been down this journey of closing deals, dude, it's a journey, man. There are struggles, man. There is challenges. And that is, you know, we talked about that a number of drifts. Yeah. It's like, so it makes it so rewarding. And so post about this deal and somebody was like, man, yeah, you know, I should have been part of that deal and something, 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 whatever. And he's like, I'm literally like, my feelings are hurt. I care about that person. And it's like, I mean, we don't need to get into the details, but I was like, man, that is, and I obviously helped them understand I built them back up. But I want to talk about the other person that sent that. You don't understand that that fucks you over more than anybody. And I use that F word and I get my mouth very close to the mic and say it as abruptly as I can. Cause I don't want to wake you up, dude. That hurts you more than anybody. You want to know why? Because what are you, you're associating somebody else's success with pain for you. Now let me just help you think bigger. Okay. You switch that and you celebrate that, per that person's success Guess how you feel successful. You want to know why I want to go surround myself with other people who are more successful? Cause I, it's not my success, but I feel that success. And the best way to be successful is to start feeling successful. And the more that you can celebrate other people's success, you taste that success, dude, believe in people, celebrate other people's success. Do not discredit it. Do not make the, help have you make that or have that make you sad. 
I mean, gosh, damn, man, celebrate that, and you will be successful. It's freaking inevitable. Man. Anyway. So true. And I've seen that a number of times where it could go both ways. People that celebrate others and people that maybe don't and maybe are a little bit bitter or whatever, maybe yeah. whatever that situation may be, whatever. And those two people, the like their paths are completely different. The way that yeah. they progress is completely different. One progresses way quicker than the other. And yeah. you can and you can you can figure out which one that is. It's definitely the person that's gonna have a positive mindset and thinks bigger and thinks bigger and yeah. celebrates others. Absolutely. So, so how do you enhance your personal yeah. belief, dude? It's so believing in others. Number two is providing value. We talked about this today too. It's mm -hmm. crazy, but we did. We talked provide here, here, I preach providing value all the time. Value creation leads to wealth creation. Well, value creation will also inevitably lead to enhanced confidence. Why? Because as you're providing value to other people, you're providing value to other people. Some people won't recognize it. That's a fact. But so, some will. And those people will let you know. And when those people let you know, your belief will be enhanced. So you need to provide value with no expectations that anybody's going to say anything. But understand that eventually they will, dude. And this is why Jackson and I were talking about it this morning, which is interesting that we go down this route and you ask that question, dude. But we were talking about it and I, I was communicating with a student of ours and I wanted to provide value, dude. I wanted to like, and I, um, but I was like, man, I don't know if they're going to see this as valuable or not, but that you can't control that. You can't control if somebody sees the value or not. You can't, you don't know what's going to resonate with somebody or not. That's, you can't control that. Yeah. What you can control is putting yourself in a position to speak truths, dude. And I spoke truths. And then I get this video back that just lit me up, dude. It lit me up because they saw it and they were grateful for it. And you know what, dude, it lit me up, man. It lit me up it and my confidence was enhanced of like, man, I need to never doubt to share some share, dude, share. So do provide value, provide value, pour into other people. And I promise you, your belief will be enhanced because other people will see it. And then it's inevitable that you see it in yourself, dude. Anyway, dude, that's awesome. Can I add something here? Yes. To providing value. I don't know how I want to say this, but it's a thought that I've had for a long time. Value cannot be relate, like cannot be correlated with money. Okay. It shouldn't be. Yeah. Money will come as a byproduct of value. Yeah. But the initial action of taking or like the initial action of creating value shouldn't like, you should not ever put a price tag on what that may look like. How much should I be getting paid for this value that I'm, that I'm providing you have like those things have to, they have, they can't correlate any longer. Yeah. If you want to have this mindset is what yep. I'm saying. You can't correlate money uh, with value. You you just can't. Yep. You can't. Will it bring you money down the road? It may. It, it may. Will. No, it will. It's a fact, bro. It, if you have this mindset you're right, talking about. Right, 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 right. It's a fact. Yes. Only if you're thinking bigger long term and understand mm -hmm. that. We'll actually talk about this. Yes, dude. I love that. It's approach. like you can't, you can't put money with value. Those things but kids, can't. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What if you're constantly providing value to others and they don't see your value? That's a good question. That's a good. I want you to answer. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know. And that situation, I would continue to provide value, dude. If it's How me, long? I would continue to provide value in a different way. I would make sure that it's seen. Yeah. I would make sure that it's but seen. But even if it's seen, you can't, you can't control that. I can't control what they believe is valuable. Yeah. Sure. So, so here's the thing. It's all perspective. Yeah. It's all mindset. So this is your ability. This is a unique thing. This is where this, this life is crazy. That's your opportunity to sit back and be like, ask a better question. Is this really valuable or do I just think it's valuable? Yeah, that's good. Am, am there you go. I providing value because it's what's valuable to me or am I really flipping the script and seeing what's valuable to them? Yep. That, that's a better question first off. Sure. But then if you do that and you think through those, and then this is just this person that just never sees your value, then dude, go, don't stop providing value. Right. Just go provide value to other people who see your value because not everyone's going to see your value, dude. It's just not, yeah. I mean, it would be awesome if it is, but man, know that you are absolutely valuable. That's not even a question. Right. Now it's just, you need to get that in front of people who actually see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. So, so, so valuable. Okay, then I got one more though. How do you enhance your personal belief? Once again, is the question. And number three is, dude, you believe in a higher power. And I love Ed Milet's book, the power of one more. If you haven't read that, you should. And it's a great book. 
And one of my favorite chapters in there was he talked about his faith, his belief in a higher power. And I love it. I'm very, uh, very spiritual. I absolutely believe in a higher power. And I've learned so much from even that chapter. And, but I put a quote in here from the book. I literally just copied and pasted it. He said, the stronger your faith is in whatever you believe, the deeper your commitment to your resulting cause will be. So the stronger your faith is in whatever you believe, the deeper your commitment to your resulting cause will be. So, so think about this. If you have faith, if you truly have faith and you pray for help, you're going to have the confidence to work harder, to try more, to do bigger things because you believe that there's help there. Faith is huge, man. A belief in a higher power that somebody's there, something, whether that is energy, whether that is God, I believe in God, but whatever you believe in energy, the God, universe, whatever, whatever it may be, yeah. you believe in a higher power and you pray and you have faith, dude, it'll absolutely enhance your belief in yourself, period. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. Um, just to take a, just another spin on that as you're praying and as you're doing these things, I believe that's a form of meditation. It is, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it's, uh, if you're not religious, if you're, if you, if you're not really into the, the, the God and having that higher power and you believe in a different sort of things, there's definitely ways and other ways to go about yep. having those things, saying a prayer, manifesting, whatever it may be. Totally. Those things have to be put in place and they're, 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 cru- they're, they're necessities of life. I believe yep. taking care of your spiritual self. Totally. bro. And that's, and that's what that, and that's, that's what I believe. If you're taking care of yourself spiritually, it's going to enhance your belief. hundred yeah. percent. I love how Ed talked about it in his book though. Go, go read it. Like how we tied it in is awesome. Science and faith and believe it was awesome. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. Okay. Number four, his bigger goals, man. Think bigger by understanding and setting bigger goals. And all I'll say with this is this more than what you think is possible is possible more than what you think is possible is possible. Never in the beginning did I envision anywhere close to where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk never envisioned in the beginning where he's at now. Um, Zuckerberg never envisioned where he's at now. Thinking bigger means setting bigger goals, like more than what you think is possible is possible. So when you're setting these goals, you're like, man, is it possible? Absolutely it's possible. Mm -hmm. Not only that, more than that is possible. Literally more than that is possible. So think bigger, man. Think bigger. You're going to take small actions and understand that it's not all just going to, this is actually the next one that we'll talk about, but it's not all just going to happen overnight, but you take small actions, but you think bigger, dude, more than what you think is possible is possible. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Dallas talks about that all the time. You talk about that all the time. And you, could you, do you mind talking about the experience you had with Andy about yeah. setting bigger goals or I don't know. I don't know if it was necessarily about setting bigger goals, but it was when you kind of talked about yeah. this with him. Do you mind sharing that? Well, I went into his, I went there for a mastermind to Andy's house and his house is beautiful home. And, but then we go into his garage and it's not a normal garage, dude. No, I mean, it is crazy, crazy garage with, I can't even, I can't remember now how many cars, 30 something, not regular cars. I mean, we're crazy super high end, super, super cars. And I, I asked him, I was like, man, gosh, now I can't remember the, the number though. I think I do. What's the, I number? think you told 30 million. I think it was a lot bigger than that. What was it? 40 billion. Not, not, cars? not Beal. Oh, 40 million mil. I thought it was 40, okay. 40 million. So I asked shout him, out Nico, Nico. Thank yeah. you so much from the ne- other room. Nico Appreciate to you. the other room, dude. I love it. Freaking <laughs> high five. through the glass. Boom. <laughs> Uh, I was like, man, like, help me. Like how much cars in here? And he, 40 million in cars, 40 million just in cars. Okay. So most people will look at that and think this is actually, we'll talk about this too, but most people look at that and think that is a waste, but here's what he said next. This is why it's so important to surround yourself with people who just think bigger, dude. That's way bigger thinking than I do. It is way bigger. And he said, I was like, man, it's crazy. He's like, yeah, but let me tell you something the inspiration that I've had from being in this garage surrounded by those things has resulted in way more than 40 million in revenue way more because it has energy to it. Like there's a bigger, there's energy to it. So like for me, it's all about, this is like this garage. He's like, I envision and visualize this garage for years before it actually came, before it really happened. So now being in this garage and overlooking all this and being surrounded by that energy, 
has helped me create more, way more than any of that cost, which just helps me understand thinking bigger. All right. Yeah. And I was like, man, that inspired me. Like the biggest takeaway that I got from that event was think bigger, dude, literally think bigger, like think bigger. Oh yeah. man. So powerful and such an actionable to take away there too. It's like when you accomplish a goal or whatever it is that you do, use the accomplishment of that goal yeah. to motivate you to the next thing. Yeah. And you know? share it. Can I tell well, you one obviously. thing with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the first time that he had ever had a group like that in his garage. First time. Wow. I'm so grateful. Literally, dude. So grateful that he would open that garage up for us because he has no idea, nor will he ever know the inspiration. I'm not even a car guy. It's not even about that. The inspiration that I received from that, I'm very grateful. Some people will look at that as this, you know, flex or bragging or prideful. No, dude, that is serving to those people who see the value. Boom, tying it back oh, in. Oh, <laughs> no, it's true though. see that value, dude, because I'm telling you, man, I walked away from that and I was like, I was literally grateful, so grateful, dude, that, that, that he would open up his home like that for, the, for us to see it and inspire me to do more. You know? No, dude, I want to hammer down on that really quick. A lot of times, I think a lot of people who don't come from a lot of wealth, who don't come from a lot of money, whatever that situation may look like, look at people who have $40 million worth of cars as a, as a flex or like as something that's not necessary. But listen to how Tyler's speaking right now. Listen to the motivation and the inspiration that he's received from that. And then to loop it back into something that we talked about earlier, is it serving or is it not serving? Yeah. Yeah. How your thought about your, somebody exactly, else yeah. having $40 million worth of cars, your reaction to that, hearing Great that, call. is that a negative reaction? Is that, is that feeling a negative feeling or a positive feeling? Yeah. You get to decide that though, which is the, which is the biggest thing right now. Great time. You get to decide is somebody having $40 million worth of car. Is that affect me at all? No. Yeah. Negatively. No. Negatively. That doesn't affect me yeah. at all. His yeah. pie is not my pie. He, he can eat his pie. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take away from my pie. Yeah, it shows you that there's a lot of fucking pie out there. Exactly, oh, exactly. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out and drill that in. If for whatever reason that may make you feel weird that Andy has $40 million worth of cars and that's maybe that's self-serving for him, it doesn't have to do with you. Yeah, think bigger. Think bigger. <laughs> think of it. Just change the way that you think about totally. that. Yeah. Great tie-in, dude. Okay, number five is see, dude, like long-term. Like literally think bigger by seeing the bigger picture, thinking in the long term, like literally seeing the bigger picture. Way too often we make these short term, short sighted decisions, dude. That is, I'll give you an example of this. One of our, um, Sarah, amazing partner of ours on the apartment side. Amazing. She's great. Shout out Sarah Sullivan. Amazing. Sugo Capital. Yep. Fantastic. She's awesome. But you know why we ended up partnering so much with Sarah? Because Sarah was partnering with other people, but they were not, um, they weren't, uh, they didn't see the value. They did see the value, but they, here's the thing. They did see the value, but do you know what they wanted? They thought small. They did not think long-term. They thought only in this short term and they wanted a bigger piece of pie in the short term, in the short term, a bigger piece of pie, which ultimately lost them somebody that could provide massive value to give you a bigger pie. We didn't think like that. We literally were like, man, you're super valuable, man. We'll, we'll tr like, we'll treat you like an equal. And that is why Sarah decided to partner with us as much as she has. And, uh, dude, she's extremely valuable, man. Like, but I hope you understand. And I know, you know, this, Yeah. That's impacted our portfolio a oh, ton. Oh, man. It, it, like, since she's come on? Yeah. Near, nearly close to double, to no? know? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know really exactly know, what it lot. is, but it's a lot. Do you know who else it's impacted? Her. Yeah. She no longer works at her job. She no longer does those things. Like, dude, she works in this full time. Guess how else that, Im that impacts me too. Uh -huh. She's a student in our class. Back row with her husband, Theo. Like, seeing that transition, I promise you, impacts me at a way deeper level than any small term monetary number ever would. But what's crazy is my big monetary, it's bigger. My monetary number is bigger now because of that. Think yeah. bigger. Lisa and Greg are the same thing. I freaking love and appreciate Lisa and Greg so much, man. So much. And when we do deals with them, 
which we've done a whole bunch of deals with them. And the same thing, dude, our portfolio wouldn't be where it's at without them. And why did we partner with them? Well, dude, because they provided massive value and we didn't try to undercut their value. We didn't try to go in there and negotiate bigger, bigger um, slice of the pie. And could we have done those things? I, who knows, dude, I don't care if I could have or should have. Or, I know this. I know that we went in with a long-term perspective of we saw their value, dude. And we went in with this long-term perspective and I, I, I love them, man. I'm grateful for them. Other people, they had had bad partnerships in the past that had done the same things that we just talked about with Sarah. So when I see that happening in our network, I just want to take those people and be like, you're not seeing the bigger picture. You're not thinking bigger. Think long-term. Mm -hmm. Also, people will have this, they, they make permanent decisions based on a temporary setback. Like literally I see people that will like want to quit because of a bad experience that they have. So the opposite of Noel that we just talked about. Like they have the same situation as Noel and they want to quit because it's, yeah. you know, they can't do it. And it's like, you get on the phone with them and it's just like, literally like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then they come full circle, but there's the thing. And I, that's my job as, as a coach, as a mentor, as this education business is to help people think bigger. But, but what I'm telling them is you've got to sit back and see it from a different perspective, a perspective that's serving, right? right? And the more that we can do that as people, the more that we will grow, dude. Like one of my favorite things to do is to surf. I love it. Yeah. I'm, it's not, people hear that and it's funny because I'll go to these events and people will think I'm a great surfer. No, I just like to surf. <laughs> I'm learning to be a better surfer, yeah. you know? I'm just learning it, but I love it, dude. And I don't necessarily love it because I'm great. I love it because of the challenge and I love it because getting out of nature and I like, but you know what? First off, I was nervous to surf because I had heard that uh, surfers can be protective of their, you know, waves and they don't like, you know, outsiders coming in. And that was the opposite of what I felt when I went out there. People, in, they were teaching you and helping yes. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? Opposite. There has been times when I will go surf and there is that one person who's just an ass. Yeah. I mean, dude, and just, it's like, what the, hell? how can you be out here surfing and be that angry? They're out there. And even one time I had an experience, dude, I don't need to go into the details, but I, I literally got my truck. I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm, that is ridiculous, man. I, I'm, I don't even, I don't even want to go back out there because does this guy come out all the time? I don't even know if I want to go back out there. How, can you imagine how one of my favorite things that I enjoy doing, one, the, one something that brings massive joy into my life, I uh, almost didn't do because of one, one experience, one bad interaction. Get the hell out of here. Do we go into a situation and this is a relationship based business. We talk about this all the time and we go in and we don't mesh with this one person who cares. You're going to mesh with some people. You're not going to mesh with some people. So do think bigger by literally thinking in the long term. And can I mention one more thing? Absolutely. Is forecasting out, like literally forecasting out in your life, forecasting out on these properties that we're doing. Like we just exited $99.6 million of real estate made phenomenal returns. But how do, how did we do that? We did that by thinking bigger. We got started when, other people were nervous, like meaning mm -hmm. we bought those properties. Sorry, we weren't, not when we were starting, but we bought those properties when other people were nervous. We thought bigger, looked at the whole scheme of things. And then also we were, we exited because we also forecasted. We looked at what was coming down the pipeline and realized this was an awesome opportunity for us to maximize returns. And you can relate it to the exact market we're in right now. I'm not, I'm not, um, do I believe that we're in a recession? Yes. Do I believe that a recession means house correction house housing correction no i'm not saying that the how the, the housing market won't correct what i'm saying is that i think in the long term and i see the long-term picture and i'm in it for the long term and so i believe in our ability to weather any sort of a correction because we're in it for the long term dude not this short-term situation i ain't in it to get rich quick it's it's get wealthy massively wealthy over the long run right yeah no these are huge 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 actionables here um for our newer students, for our, for our newer students in the mentorship or for any really student or any, really anybody that's expanding and growing and starting a company, right? We have these people coming on, we're teaching them how to start their own, their own multifamily um, investment firm or, or, or company, right? We're teaching them this. Did the actionable that I wanna pull out of this is when you're thinking about building that team, make sure to think, think bigger, Yeah. right? Think about these people like Sarah, like the parishes, don't skimp to pay those people up front. 
Don't like I, I'll be very blunt about what Tyler was talking about right here. They were not being taken care of where they were previously. They were not. We provided that for them, yeah. that multifamily capital partners, yeah. so that they so that they could come over to us and have, like you said, have that full focus where it needs to be to benefit yeah. both parties. Such an actionable that I just wanted to point out there is don't skimp on those things. Get people that are dedicated that want to be there and then pay them what they're worth. Totally. And investors, I look at it from a passive investor Such side. Such a good point. So many passive investors or the potential passive investors are like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go buy a single family property or whatever. I, well, I could either invest passively here or buy a single family property. Do think bigger, man. Think bigger. Like literally put your money to work in an avenue that you, that has nothing to do with you think that's going to be a better return on time or investment. It's about you feel like you want to be able to control it. And do I want you to do your due diligence so that you know who you're investing with and what you're investing in? And yes, that's being a good steward of your money. But also to think bigger and understand that when you can truly put your money to work in an area where with experts, pe people that are like, that's what they dedicate their lives to, your chances of winning increase. It's a fact. So yeah. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It's so true. Okay, you talked about long-term, seeing the picture long-term. Okay, what was number, that was number five. So number six, as we wrap up here. Is abundance. Think bigger, meaning abundance. And I, I relate this with direct versus indirect forces. And I can't, I don't know if I've talked about this on podcasts or not, but I, I literally believe that indirect forces can be way more powerful, way more powerful at compounding success than direct forces, like d direct thing, things that directly for, forces that directly impact success. Shit's too easy, dude. That's never the separator. It's never the separator. Like I'll give you an example of this in indirect abundance, indirect forces. Okay. Pouring value into people that cannot directly impact your success, but I will promise you that it will indirectly pouring value into other people will indirectly impact your success. Why? Because those people will be grateful. And when they're, so think about an indirect force, they'll be grateful. When they're grateful, you realize that you had value to provide. When you realize you have value to provide, your confidence increases. When your confidence increases, you take bigger actions. When you take bigger actions, you do bigger things, you accomplish bigger goals, and your life changes, dude. That's an indirect force that caused that, right? We were talking about, I can't remember what we were talking about up above when I said, and it made me think about it, but or, or earlier is what I mean by that. Um, I can't remember what we were just talking about where I was like, that's an indirect force, an indirect force for it. I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, uh, was it, were we talking about Sarah? Maybe, but that is an indirect force. Maybe um, that actually was almost a direct force, but I can't remember. It doesn't matter, but there's tons of things. Like we, you come to our events and you'll see things at our event. People will walk into our events and they'll, you know, they're like, oh man. Just... And I remember when we first started to set up for these events and you know, I was like, no, I want two screens. I want pipe and drape. I want, you know, nice manual. I want this. I want, and I banners. I want, and it's like, well, is that really necessary? Yeah, dude, that's an indirect force. It's an indirect force because when people come in, they feel good. When I'm there, I'm proud of what we have. And dude, there is no way that I can go teach and inspire and help and engage if, I don't, if I'm not proud of what we have. Why do we spend so much time building content, working through curriculum? Because dude, Yes, that will directly impact our students, but that doesn't necessarily direct. Well, it does because if it directly impacts our students, it does that. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the company, but I'll tell you a, a deeper level of that is it makes me proud of what we have. It makes me proud. It makes me confident, right? Flying first class. I fly, fly first class every single time. It's not cheap from Maui. No, no. And listen, one day, maybe one day, maybe I'll get to a point where I can fly, fly private one day. It's going to happen. It will. But why do I do that? Why does that even matter? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that when I fly for an indirect thing, okay, well, I'll tell you what it directly impacts. It directly impacts my health, my sleep, my productivity and work. And what are those things indirectly impact everything, dude? When I land from a long flight, I'm more, re uh, more renewed to be a dad. When I when I land home, when I land after a long flight to go do an event, I'm more energized and renewed to go beat that business person doing that event, teaching, inspiring, helping, right? A maid at the house. How does the maid indirectly impact or in, indirectly impact? Well, dude, it allows me to focus my energy and focus our energy on the areas where we want to focus our energy, which is our kids and each other and that. 
you know it's yeah. like util- it's it's utilizing things that we have people will think about accumulation of money i want to utilize my money as a tool money is only a tool if we use it but those are indirect forces that's an abundant site so we think bigger by having an abundant mindset that makes sense totally that totally makes sense i want to just i want to i want to hammer down on the indirect forces and how you can provide how you can be abundant there i think a lot of times people have like just simply by your energy and your mindset and your perspective on things and your language that you use those are also indirect forces yeah. how you how you communicate with others yep. making sure you're saying please and thank you always those little things we talk about little things make big differences those indirect forces that you can have in very simple conversation whatever it may be opening the door for somebody it's going to provide value yeah. and it's it's an abundant mindset right you it, a lot of times i think people think oh i don't want to come off too nice because then i want don't want to get walked over but that's one of those that's one of those abundant mentalities that you need to have is niceness is kindness of you know what i mean is doing is doing those things if that makes sense yeah, because dude. that value that comes with those things is massive massive, massive. let me dude massive I ju- you don't know this. You don't even know this. But I just had a conversation yesterday with multiple people about uh, a person that is um, somebody in the space. And long story short is this. They're like, hey, what's your approach going to be? I'm like, kindness, dude. Kindness. You want to know why? Because kindness is confidence. Confidence is – kindness is confidence. Like if I go in there freaking ripping that person to shreds, that is any meanness, any meanness is something that is, uh, it's lack of confidence. It's insecurity. It's insecurity. That's what I was looking for. 100%. It's insecurity. Kindness I could talk about confidence. this. I could talk about this for days. Yeah. Kindness yeah. is confidence, yep. dude. Like the most confident people, you know, the most successful people, you know, go watch them, go watch how they interact with people, go watch how they treat people. They, they don't need to be the freaking. they don't need to act like they're the, this top person that dude, they know that they're that person. And they don't need anybody else validation from anybody else. They know they're that person because their belief is enhanced. They know that that's who they are and they treat people like they're that person. That's confidence, dude. And that's abundant. That's abundance. Yep. That no, you're no, you're not better than anybody. Yeah. All right. That's one of those things that, that comes with that too. I just, think bigger, dude. man, think bigger. I love it. Ty, we covered six amazing principles. Yeah, I don't even know how long we've been going. I don't know. This has to be a long uh, one. This has got to be a long one, but it's been amazing. We covered mindset, thinking bigger in your mindset. Mindset impacts everything. It really does. Real estate, doing apartment deals rather than doing single family and just thinking bigger. And the bigger that you think there, the more that it will enhance your belief and enhance your chance of winning. Exactly. We talked about thinking bigger and enhancing your belief. We talked about a couple really really strategic things that you can do there enhancing your enhancing your belief in others yeah believe in others is going to enhance your belief in yourself love that that's a note you took on there dude yeah provide value yep provide value is another one that can enhance your belief in yourself and believing in a higher power loved that one very good reminder fourth thing we talked about is bigger goals really setting those goals that you don't think you can even attain right now but set those and shoot for those and you will be able to attain those if you think bigger fifth thing we talked about is seeing the big picture Right, looking at everything from the big picture, forecasting forward, not not skimping and being short up front because you're because you're worried or have a scarcity mindset about finances or whatever it may be. It's really taking those those big leaps forward um, up front. And then the last sixth thing we talk about was abundance. Um, so many powerful things in this episode. Ty, thank you. You're welcome. We talked about to, to wrap up and summarize abundance, direct versus indirect forces. Think about it. It's so important. Those little changes can have a massive impact as we wrap up today hawaiian value give us a hawaiian value as we wrap up so the one that i used today was nana ike kumu nana ike ku nana nana ike kumu i probably said that perfectly yeah no yeah. it's like exactly yep. how you say that mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know but nana means nana means to look observe or pay attention to ke kumu is the teacher beginning the source the origin okay so listen when we look to the source uh we look to god god is the source and god is in the details of our lives dude and when we look to the source we gain clarity we gain confidence and we gain the ability to think bigger so nana i kekumu 
Man. Nailed it. woo <laughs> Love it. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much. Hopefully, man, you gain some value here and you understand that thinking bigger uh, is a way of life. It's literally a way of life. And I'll, I'll remind you how we started this and where this all came about and where this the magic of thinking bigger, dude. You don't have to be super this standout person to do outstanding things, but you do need to think in a way that is bigger to do outstanding things. And if you think in that way, and you force, it's a challenge, dude. You challenge yourself to think in that way, you will cultivate massive success in your life. So, yeah. Turn the positives in, or turn the negatives into positives. Yeah. What's serving you? What's not serving you? Tyler, yeah. thank you so much, man. Hey, so, such thank powerful. Thank Love y'all. Have a great weekend and live always with Aloha. Peace. <laughs>